I hardly know what to tell you about the next half hour, except that it has been reported as true by those to whom it happened. It has been investigated, and no one as yet has been able to explain it or disprove it. This historic French chateau in the Rhone Valley is for sale, or rent, as many are these days. But either way, the price is rather steep. If you're seriously interested in either buying or leasing this particular one, there are some things you should know. For instance, in its more recent history, around 1892, this chateau was the scene of a dark and chilling drama the old people in the village below still talk about that night and still in whispers. For one important player of this drama, the beginning was the end. Oremos. Deus qui proprium es misereri sempre, e percere tu supplicaes extramos pro anima familia tui janere. Oh, <laughs> that those who are joined together by thine authority may be preserved by thy help through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Monsieur le Marquis, Madame. Madame la Marquise. Of course, Madame la Marquise. But he meant no disrespect, my dear. We'll take a light luncheon in the drawing room, Ellen. Only for two, Monsieur le Marquis. Only for two, a small reception. Very well, Madame. What are you called? My name is Ernest, Madame la Marquise. Ernest. I have seen large strawberries, huge, fresh ones, on the table here when I came to visit in the past. I would like some of those. Very well, Madame la Marquise. A lot. A big plate. Very well, Madame la Marquise. Madame la Marquise. We had a name for him in the village. Another name. Oh, but well, we won't talk about that. I am a lady now. I'm here. I am here. You have been here before. No, but not this way. Before it was sweet Charlotte from the village. Dear Charlotte. Someone to pass a rainy afternoon with when no one important was around. I used to sit here on the edge of the chair, humbly, having tea. Jeanette was very democratic. <laughs> Has ever the world seen such an unhappy groom? No, it's not that, my dear. It's just that it's been such a strange day today. It must have been a strange day for Father Leon, too. He was unhappy. Well, he buried Jeanette only four months ago. So no one is happy but the bride, eh? Oh, Charlotte, give me a little time. You know that I love you. You know that I love you. <laughs> you say that like a mouse. No one at the church but two choir boys. And no reception. Had I married the village chimney sweep, I would have had a more gala wedding than this. We agreed to do it this way, quietly, so there'll be no talk. And if they talk, what could they say? Charlotte. But I am human. I want to show off my new husband. And your new house. And my new house. Oh, you don't know what it's like to be as poor as a sparrow, but not to feel like a sparrow. Actually, I think some of this furniture is rather old. Not old, my dear. Antique. When you are rich, something old is antique. But when you are poor, something old is something old. Do you think I could learn to play the piano at my age? <laughs> oh, 
Am I going to have to look at that 24 hours a day? Yes. And why? Remember, you were so fond of Jeanette. Well, wasn't I? Didn't I come to visit her every dreary day of her illness, bringing her soups and custards and jams, and sitting by her bedside to be sure that she ate every spoonful? Charlotte, a little delicacy. Ah, oh, you've changed from the impatient lover who complains so bitterly. Why does it take so long? Why does it take so long? Charlotte! And don't talk to me about delicacy. The servants might overhear. <laughs> she was a mouse, too. Oh, a pretty mouse. You should have been very happy. And she was an aristocrat. And how did you fall in love with someone so lowly as the widow of a common soldier? Tell me, Your Honor. Charlotte. <laughs> no, tell me first. No, no, tell me first. <laughs> this is Rose, Charlotte. I have seen Rose in the market many times. Always the best for the Marquise. The best meats, the best vegetables, the best this, the best that. <laughs> Look at the size of this one. Open your mouth. <laughs> Ernest. Hello. Take the picture down from the wall, please. Very well, Madame la Marquise. I am so hungry. Eat, my darling. Eat. <laughs> well, you bring me another bottle of that marvelous wine. Very well, Madame de Matthews. Did Jeanette play the piano very well? What is it? What's the matter? Nothing. Well, then why do you act as though it was something? I thought I saw something on the wall. Can't you see it? See what? Look more closely. Oh, it's a stain. I thought I saw it after lunch. A little while ago, I woke up. I had to come down here. Something forced me. What are you talking about? Don't you really see what it is? It's nothing. It's the outline of a skull. Come up to bed. Platters and platters of wonderful things. Meats and fish and delicate things. And for the wines, the best wines in the cellar. I want them to leave with the stomachache of their lives. Will that be all, Madame la Marquise? Ernest, excuse us. You too, please. Well, what do you think? Do I look like a real Marquise now? Will you be proud of me at the party? Charlotte, I tell you it's worse. It's much worse today. The wall again. You've got to come and see it. It's so much clearer now. Rose has been scrubbing at it for an hour. You've got to come and see it again. Come and see what? 
Oh, for the love of heaven, Charlotte, come and see it. Come and see it, come and... All right, let us go and see it. this morning. I have tried everything, lie even. It is probably some water seeping through the wall. Then wouldn't it be damp, madame? Well, what do you suppose it is? Charlotte. Rose, when you were a little child, did you ever play a silly game? A game, madame? Oh, you know, like looking at a stain on a wall or the ceiling and imagining it to be something other than a stain. Or a butterfly. Or an elephant. Or a ballerina in a little skirt. Yes, madame. I remember that game. And what does this stain remind you of? Rose, leave us. Stay. Look at the stain. Let us see how much imagination you have. It is just some spots. That's all. Oh, but I can see lots of things in it. Two blackbirds sitting on a fence. A skull. A dancing bear. Rose, I told you to leave. Yes, Monsieur Le Marquis. But later on, come back and clean up this mess before the party. Yes, madame. Baiting the girl like that. Charlotte, have you lost your mind? No. Have you? But why won't it wash out? Look at it. Can't you see? More and more, it's becoming Jeannette. Jeannette? <laughs> I tell you, it's true. And I tell you, you need a doctor. Already, I think you're beginning to have a little fever. And I would like you well for my party. There won't be any party. We must lock this room up until we find out what this is. Oh, Sherry, this is such nonsense. You're talking like a little boy. But what is it? A stain in the stone. It is not in the stone. No, it is in your conscience. And that is dangerous. Ernest! I know it will finally be her face, the way she looked just before she died, when she realized what we had done to her. You remember how she looked? The terror in her eyes. How could you even think of having people in here? Madame la Marquise. Ernest, Rose seems unable to get the stain off that wall. I know, Madame la Marquise. Well, it would look very bad for our guests. Yes, Madame la Marquise. It also looks very empty, doesn't it, Ernest? Yes, Madame la Marquise. Well, what shall we do about it? If I may suggest, Madame la Marquise, to cover it. With what? A picture? <laughs> Cherie, would you mind very much if we hang Janet's picture just for tonight? Get the picture. And have Rose come back and clean up this mess. Yes, Madame. Charlotte, can't we call the party off? Have it later. I'm so worried. Yes, I know. And that makes me worry. About you. Yes, but I... I am so frightened I cannot sleep. You are losing control. Can't we put the party off? No, we cannot. I did not marry you to bury myself alive. Madame, I see something. Oh, I'm sorry, madame. That game you mentioned. What do you see, Rose? Well, when you look at it a certain way, it does look exactly like... Like what? Charlotte. A dancing bear. I thought I had said good night to all of my guests. I'll be going. Jacques, aren't you going to say good night to the father? What? <laughs> what a host you've been. All evening long, just standing here. When he has a little too much wine, he becomes like a statue. Perhaps we should put him in the public park and let the children dance around him. Well, good night, my son. Don't go. Wait. Help me. Help you? How? Help me. I'll get it. It's in the library. 
He really shouldn't drink so much wine. It seems to me he drank very little. If you want to go now, I'll explain. I'll wait. Well, did you enjoy the evening? Yes, it was pleasant. I've come up in the world. Do you remember when I used to come to Mass with hardly a sou for the collection plate? Yes, now it's different. Now you don't come at all. Or well, your disapproval of our marriage so quickly. <laughs> it was obvious. It was your decision. He was very lonely. And she was a dear friend. You can help me with this. You'll know exactly where to find it. Find what? Jeannette gave me this. I poked fun at her. When did I last come to confession? Some months, I would say. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. At least I remember how to begin. Jacques, confession is on Saturday. Why don't you go to bed? Find it for me, please. Find what? Is it in Daniel or Isaiah? The king who saw something on the wall? Really, I must insist. Midnight is no time for this. I am speaking to Father Leon. It's in the book of Daniel. In the same hour, there appeared fingers, as if it were the hand of a man, writing upon the surface of the king's wall. Yes, that is it. Then was the king's countenance changed, and his thoughts troubled him. And the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees struck one against the other. Then was the king's countenance changed, and his thoughts troubled him. How well you speak the holy words, Father. What was on the wall? The words, many tekel faris. God hath numbered thy kingdom, and thou art found wanting. Uh, what? Thou art weighed in the balance, and art found white. God! 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 Charla, I can see it still. I can see it on the wall. Enough! Through the picture. Enough! Ernest! Bless me, Father, for I have seen. Madame la Marquise. Ernest, help the Marquis upstairs. shouldn't drink so much wine. Yes, of course. The wine. Good night. Is he all right? Monsieur le Marquis seems to be. Seems to be? I'm sure Monsieur le Marquis will be all right. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Tell me. I've known Monsieur le Marquis since, since he was a little child. But I never saw him like this. <laughs> You've never seen him when he's had too much to drink? Madame la Marquise, it isn't a drink. If he has too much to drink, he is gay. He does all sorts of pleasant things, but he doesn't cry. He seems to be in such despair. He asked for a writing paper. What? Then a moment later, he changed his mind. He said, no, Ernest, it's no use. And then he started talking about... It is probably just the wine that affects him differently this time. What was he talking about? His first wife. I see. If Madame la Marquise would kindly excuse me, I'm very tired. What did he tell you of his first wife? Oh, nothing. That she was a gentle, kindly lady. Well, we all know that, don't we, Ernest? Yes, Madame Lemaitre. 
Forgive me, madame. I'm so afraid. Afraid of what? I... He has become so melancholy, so... so strange. I fear for his life. I understand. Between us, I have felt the same thing. We must watch him very carefully, Ernest. Good night. Good night, Madame la Marquise. And thank you. When you asked for the writing paper, what were you going to do? Send a message to the police? I can't go on. What am I to do? What am I to do? If you only knew how grand you and this great house look to us from the village. What a feeling of power and strength. What am I to do? Go to sleep, Sherry. Sleep? How can I? Would you like something to make you sleep? I think I would. Well, it's late for the servants. I'll go down to the kitchen and fix you some hot chocolate myself. Yes, do. Charlotte. I want it to work quickly, not like Jeanette. <laughs> you are such a child. Charlotte, I'm here. I came downstairs. I want to drink it down here. As you wish. Drink it all. It will make you feel so much better. I know it will. Charlotte. What? Look at the wall. Oh, the wall again. Look at the wall, Charlotte. Such nonsense. Look. I didn't have enough courage to drink more than a sip. Now, I must find courage enough to face the guillotine, eh, Inspector? What about her? She touched any of this? No. It must have been her heart, the shock. She dropped to the floor like a stone after seeing it. Don't touch it! I had to cover it. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it. You couldn't stand what? The Marquis de Roger went to the guillotine, insisting there was an image on this wall. And at his trial, his servants swore under oath that something was on the wall, something that could not be removed. Well, there is something, isn't there? It doesn't look very terrifying. But in the village, there are those who will tell you that on the anniversary of her death, the face of Jeanette sometimes reappears. True or false? Jeanette died on the 12th of April. Now, if some April 12th, you happen to be in the vicinity, why not call the local estate agent? He'll escort you up the hill, and you can see for yourself. In a moment, something about next week. When a dominating personality lives in a house for a long time, he seems to leave an indelible and sometimes evil imprint in the very atmosphere of the place. If you're inclined to doubt this, be with us next week and see what happens to the captain's guest.